Progressive brings you Flowetry with Flow. The better you drive, the more you save. Bears and bats, they live in a cave, but that's irrelevant here. So back to the subject we steer. Snapshot saves you money when you drive safe. I wear corduroy pants. I don't mind that they chafe. The better you drive, the more you can save. With Snapshot from Progressive. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in all states or from all agents. Hi, I'm stunning Stella Cheeks. And I'm the Enigma Aaron Klein. And this is Not, Not Your, Your Demographic. Demographic, a feminist wrestling podcast. Shockingly, those exist. <laughs> <laughs> No, mercy. I don't no. know why I started doing no that. No mercy. I didn't no. know how to no. start it, so I just started clapping. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> so, welcome to the podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Night Air Demographic. We already, did, there's already, we already did that. At the beginning. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> how are you? I'm really good. I had a um, really great weekend. I went home to Michigan, and I hung out with my college friends. I surprised them. Uh, my uh, friend Tony. I saw that. Yeah, my, one of my really I good like friends. I was like jealous. I was like, I haven't seen Tony in forever. Oh my god, I hadn't seen Tony in like a year. He's one of my um, oldest friends. He and I went to elementary school together. We've been friends for decades. Uh, he lives in Seattle now, and I hadn't seen him in like a year. And he sent me a snap, and he was at the airport, and I was like, where the fuck are you going? And I was in a train, and he was like, where the fuck are you going? And we got into Lansing at the exact same time. And so I dropped That's all my funny. shit off at my mom's house, and I took a lift, and I met him, and he was like, oh, I'm going to be at Rachel and Ben's house. And I was like, oh, great, I'll just meet you there. So I get there, I knock on the door, and everyone's like, la, 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 making fun of whoever's knocking on the door. And I open the door, and they all freak out, because Tony's not there yet, and no one knew I was coming. <laughs> so I just, that used to be my thing, too. I used to, like, pop up surprise people all the time and so they were like I can't believe after like eight fucking years you still just show up and surprise everybody <laughs> and I was like whoops sorry pulled an Aaron I guess <laughs> so it was like really fun to get to hang out with them and then on, sa- on Sunday I went to a wedding with my sister and my brother-in-law uh, someone that we went to high school with so I met up with all my old high school friends who I hadn't seen in a long time but I'm still like friendly with who are all married now and so it was like what was your wedding like what was your wedding Wait, like was Tony going to that wedding no he was going to a different wedding that's really funny yeah so we were like oh, that's very bizarre I told him I was going to our high school friends and he was like oh shit I'm going to our college friends wedding I was like I couldn't go to that because I'm going to this other wedding <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just worked out very bizarre. Yeah, she got married at um, MSU's campus in one of those halls. Fucking beautiful. She's, MSU's a pretty campus. She's Lebanese, and he's Mawani, I think. And they had the craziest fucking reception I've ever been to. It literally <laughs> opened with a woman twirling swords and like going through the dance floor and like swinging fucking big ass swords over her head and I was like what the fuck is happening <laughs> and my brother-in-law was emceeing the wedding and he had no idea what was happening it was this group called the Arabian Nights and they did this like that's dr- why you hire a wedding planner so I know, that right? the DJ knows what's happening well the DJ knew what was happening oh MC. I- yeah oh that's weird to have a DJ and an MC that are different this was a big ass fucking wedding. I think they said there were like 350 people there. Girl, that's nothing. I worked some Greek weddings that were like 500. Plus. Oh my god. Well, when my mom and my stepdad got married, they had 450 people, which makes me want to die that's thinking so about many it now. People. I know it is so many people. Oh my god, we had like a wave of RSVPs, and we're down to like 160 people. That's I'm nice. So excited! It's like exactly what we wanted to. I'm so fucking happy. I'm so glad. Anyway, so we went to this like crazy ass wedding, and yeah, MSU's campus is really nice. And so I went outside, and I was like, I found this like secret spot on a hill. I was just like smoking pot in the back, like this is the greatest day ever. <laughs> and then just went home, and, like had a relaxing week. It was really good. I've been doing a lot of wedding stuff for myself, but it was nice to go see like. A wedding. There were these adorable children who were their bride. Ugh, their, like, no children are the weddings. 
they were the flower girls and the bride and the like ring bearer. And they entered the oldest one, pulled the other two in a wagon. It was real cute. But everybody started. What do you do for dogs? But everybody was like giggling. And the kid got embarrassed and like didn't understand that people were like laughing because they were delighted and not laughing at him. So he drops the wagon handle and just takes off. <laughs> and it just left these two kids in the middle. Fuck these kids. And I was like, oh, that's right. Things can go wrong and it's still like delightful. Yeah, it doesn't it was, matter. was like a nice reminder. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And also, they because it, it's a Lebanese tradition where there's money. Oh. Yes. Uh, that happens so, in so many cultures, uh, and I'm really sad that it's not in my culture. Is I, it cultural appropriation if I'm just like, can I, we do this can thing? Can we please do where this? We throw money while I dance. I know, right? <laughs> I loved it, and everyone around me was like trying to toss bills that were folded. I was like, motherfuckers, clearly never been to a luchador show. You need to ball your money up and fucking <laughs> toss it overhand over everyone else. And I literally almost hit the bride in the face with my bills because I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just know how to do this. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> How are you? Good. I also had a wedding field weekend. Ooh. I worked a friend's wedding on Saturday. I have never worked so hard in my entire life. Really? Even I like worked firehouse? Or 12 and a half hours, nonstop, dripping in sweat, maybe <sighs> sat for 20 minutes. This was like... What the I don't. Fuck? <laughs> I think in all other wedding situations, I've either been an assistant or had an assistant. Mm-hmm. I did this by myself, and there was, I mean, there was the, like, banquet manager who was great, and thank God for her, but, like, there was just so many moving parts, and, like, people, even though I, like, made this great timeline, I mean, it all came together, and it was great, whatever, but I made this timeline, had these meetings, and, like, it was just, like, people were not paying attention, there were too many cooks (laughs) in the kitchen, they had a couple bridesmaids who, like, got, like, who were, like, well, I'm the friend, I need to do this, I had to pull this one bridesmaid aside, like, several times and be, like, this is my job. (laughs) Just let me do this. You don't Ooh. have to do this. You're not here to work. Go away. <laughs> I also had this really annoying thing happen where, because it was for a burlesque performer, so a lot of the people who attended the wedding were burlesque performers. They know me, obviously. Um, and I'm, you know, dressed professionally and running around, like, sweating, freaking out, telling people where to go and what to do. And so many people were like, oh, are you working right now? And I was like, yes. Yes, I And then am. so many people were like, Oh, is this like your job? I thought you were just doing this like for because it's like a. I want to put this like fork in my eye. And I was like, yeah, this is my for real job. <laughs> Dicks. <laughs> I don't know why that made me so mad. There's so many people who are like, oh wow, you're really good at this. Do you actually do this? Yeah, hoes. <laughs> motherfuckers, what the fuck do you mean? At the end of the night, I was oh my god, thir- or twelve and a half hours. I have a giant bruise on my leg because I was running around so much that I like ran into a table and I walked away four blisters. One that today when I came home from the gym, I took my sock off and one of them was just like bleeding. Everywhere. Oh my and God. Like, oh my God. My sh- And then the next day we went to a wedding, which was fun, but I was like wearing heels and stuff. The next day on Monday, I got up out of bed and I could barely walk. My body was so sore. Like my shins hurt. I like huh. hobbled around like a toddler, like between working... 13 hours on my feet, running around, sweating, and then going to a wedding and being in heels and dancing and stuff. Like, I I thought, I almost fell over. I, like, stood up and almost fell over. When we did um, Convergence, uh, the show. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I don't yeah. know what that show is. I couldn't remember if that was the actual title. And I yeah, was like, it's called I, Convergence. Yeah. An epic nerdless cabaret. Yes. The shoes that I was wearing, I broke three pairs of shoes during that show. But I had that, by the end of the run, my shins hurt so bad that every time I put my shoes on, I was like, I'm literally going to fall over. It's rough. It was so bad. Like, I do not know how you wear heels so often. I, I, make I fun thought of Nick. I was going to die. It was awful. Nick works for a company called Power Play, and I make fun of him all the time. That Power Play is like the only thing that made my shins feel better because it like (laughs) livens your like nerves up and like Mm -hmm. awakens your feet and stuff and I was like this is the only thing that feels good (laughs) (laughs) but it was really fun and then Monday we had a really relaxing day and then last night I did a really cool thing so in Logan Square there's this thing called a comfort station which used to yeah so like it used to be a place where like you know, people would go to get, like, soup and stuff, and, like, it was a torn-down building, and then they rebuilt it, and it's kind of, like, a community center now. Went on their website randomly just to, like, see what their new exhibit was, and they were showing a movie called, I can't say in Spanish, but it's El Santo and the Vampire Women. It's one of those, like, luchador Ooh. movies from, like, the 50s, Yeah, it was, like, such a big genre, and it was, like, luchadors and vampires, and it was free. It was, like, yeah, we're gonna go to this. Yeah, so, for sure. <laughs> me and Ray Ray went last night, and it was... 
I mean, it was a terrible movie. Like, it was made in the 50s and is, like, terrible pulp vampires and, like, luchador wrestling. But it was so fun. Oh, that's awesome. And now I, like, want to watch all of these, like, crazy luchador movies. (laughs) Fuck yeah, dude. Awesome. I had to repress, like, mystery science theater, like, tendencies. It was, like, it's so... No spoilers, but El Santo is supposed to be the hero in it, and he, like, doesn't do shit. (laughs) The reason that vampires get defeated is because, like... There's like 15 vampires and only like one bitch is doing all the work and all these <laughs> other all these other vampires are just sitting down being like you better get this your shit together and like yeah she fails cuz everyone else is just sitting on their ass. And then they're like Typical. oh shit. The sun is up. <laughs> and she's like I ran out of time cuz I was doing all this stuff by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then El Sando just like carries the damsel in distress out and is like you didn't do anything <laughs> that's hilarious I know and there were like two like 10 plus minute like old school wrestling matches just like in the middle of the show there was one point in the movie where the like professor the dad of the like damsel or whatever was like El Sando are you gonna be at the party tomorrow to protect her and El Sando goes I swear to god verbatim no I can't I'm busy <laughs> He's supposed to be the hero of the whole thing. Huh? And he's just like, no, I can't be there. I'm real fucking busy. <laughs> what the fuck? He was like wrestling, but it was just still funny. Like, you're supposed to be this hero. Nah. I love it. I can't be there. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I got a match. Yeah, we got to find one of those and watch it with Meg and, Chris and Courtney Rose. That would be super fun. Uh, yeah, apparently they're hard to get because there's like licensing issues and not a lot of them have like subtitles. But like, I could at least watch this one again. It was super crazy. That, was, that sounds amazing. I was going to say, I saw that there was Lucha Libre in the park last weekend too. Yeah, I went I the was previous out of town. year, but yeah. I had the wedding, so I, I know. couldn't. I was really disappointed. I was out of town in Michigan both years. Two in a row. Stop like, going to man. Michigan. I know, right? This you is You go terrible. back too much. I barely go back in. It's just because I'm getting fucking married. People want to give me shit. I'm like, all right, I guess. <laughs> People want to give me shit. Like, How what, rude. What do I love more than wrestling? Free shit. So, like, that obviously. That might be your favorite thing. You're the biggest cheap mooch Michael, I've ever met in my life. Michael said that to me the other day. He was like, you will do anything to get nice free things and i was like yeah that's like a core <laughs> part of my personality in the venn di- diagram of aaron free shit is one of those circles i like nice things but i am also extremely cheap so i like really nice free things <laughs> <laughs> and i've got a lot of really nice free things i just am very patient that's why <laughs> so ridiculous you have great things and i just wait for you to get tired of them and i'm like that's i'll true. get these a lot of your nice things have come from me <laughs> from you and from lots of people's dead grandparents i have lots and lots of dead grandparents stuff <laughs> yeah because you like all the weird shit that dead grandparents used to exactly wear. <laughs> <laughs> everything will circle back in like 15 years and i'll be like guess what everyone got this shit for free a decade ago <laughs> <laughs> what wrestling shirt are you wearing now? I am wearing my Asuka Empress of Tomorrow gray red sun v-neck shirt. I oh, oh literally it. only because I don't have a shirt of anybody in the top eight of the Mae Young Classic. That That's it. And I wore Kimberly's last week. So I was like, well, I can't wear it two weeks in a row. That's lazy. So That's lazy. I literally just piss- picked Asuka because I know that she... Uh, Relinquish the belt. You know, it's really lazy. Hmm. Not wearing any wrestling shirt. I know, you're not wearing a single wrestling shirt. All of these weeks of you, like, bitch, why do you keep forgetting to ask about my shirt? You're not even wearing one today. It is a nice shirt. I do like that color. Yeah, well, my friend is a trainer, and she lives in Florida, but she still, um, she has this app, and she can, like, make programs for you, so I've been, like, really actually going to the gym, not just, like, on the elliptical, like, really going to the gym, and I just didn't have time to change. Cool, but I, I did it. buy a Rosemary shirt and a Nicole Savoy shirt. So I did buy some merch this All week. Right. Just not currently wearing any. All right. That's good. Let's talk about news, bae. Beam. Sexy star doesn't know how to apologize and then was fired. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I feel like that needs to be like a seminar that we teach children. Because the <laughs> amount of people who don't understand how to apologize. Oh, it's insane. Like, how... <sighs> Did you say, I'm sorry? No? This no. North American wrestler came in. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, Good thing you got a boxing career. I guess so, right? <laughs> your wrestling career is over. Yep. Sexy shit, man. Sexy shit. Like, just, Didn't what? Jericho call her that? 
I think she's, he said, you're a sexy piece of shit. <laughs> oh, Jericho. Which I love, and I think is fantastic. Did like, you know that Jericho was on Dancing with the Stars, like, yeah. several seasons ago? Yeah, I did know that. I did not know that. Yeah, I totally knew that. He was, like, one of the first couple people eliminated. Maybe the first person he eliminated. He wasn't the first. He was one of the first couple, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did know that. How long do you think Nikki's gonna last? I think she's gonna last a long time. She's pretty, she's got I, big boobs, and she's very athletic and can move well. Yeah, and a bunch of, like, other... <laughs> If you listen to Heels and Heels, they broke down every winner of Dancing with the Stars. And a lot of them are, like, athletic, pretty women who middle-aged dads are like, yeah, I'll vote for that one. Like, it's still... like them still, titties. Yeah, it, there's still a lot of call-in voting, which is bizarre. Because middle America mm-hmm. doesn't have their shit together. Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> like, I've been watching So You Can Think, So You Think You Can Dance this season. I don't know why I didn't watch it this season. I love that show. I fucking love it's it. And Why didn't watch last season? Because it was like, So You Think Kids Can Dance or oh, something. Yeah, and I was that. like, I, I hate mean, children. I was like, you're achieving more than I could a decade before I could. Fuck you, I can't do this. That's... I like MasterChef Junior because I'm like, this is adorable. And I love that Gordon Ramsay loves children. I think that that's real cute. But like, uh, children achieving more highly than me in other things? I think not. I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> I think not. <laughs> I think not. Old. But the, this Guess season... What? You step up to me, I can still kill you. Right? I can literally kick you in the face. Get out of... I will fight your children like <laughs> heel Kofi Kingston would have. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. So you think you can dance this season? Like, two weeks ago, I haven't... I'm not caught up. But two weeks ago, the woman who had the two best dances in the show and the woman who had the two worst dances in the show were up against each other because that's how the voting works. But because the woman with the first two dances was a choreographer, they wanted to keep her. And so they let the other woman go and she had this look on her face like, are you fucking kidding me? That's part of the reason I I don't like like watching voting shows like that. It sucks. How? They don't take DVR people into account at all. Like well, you get like that, you get like twelve hours to vote. I get up and watch them the next morning, and I would vote for people, but they make it impossible to do that. And so it's like, I voted. oh, it's only people who watch it live, or like I caught it. Well, I meant I hate it. Later. I don't even hate that. I I mean it's not great, but I hate that like people who are really good get sent home because for dumb reasons. Like it should yeah, you should make it farther in competitions because you're good at shit. That's why I like. Like, I like Do you it. want to talk about Mae Young? Just kidding. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, like, a related American <laughs> grit because it's that same kind of thing where, like, you have this personality, John Cena, who leads it, and also, like, you get eliminated by chance, but also because of, like, physical competition that makes sense. Right. Like, I like that a lot. Okay, yes, let's talk about Mae well, Young. Well, no, let's finish news. Okay. Melissa <laughs> Santos is pregnant. What? <laughs> you didn't see that? No. Baby Cage. Baby Swolverine. What? No, I did not know that. Holy shit. How pregnant? When pregnant? When does she do? <laughs> what? I think you just need to like figure it out and then we'll talk about it next week. What? I don't know. I'm trying to find her Instagram. <gasps> oh my God. Okay. Well, I don't know how to spell Melissa. <laughs> M-E-L-I-S-S-A. <laughs> Coming to a ring near you in 2018, baby Cage Santos. Wow. All right. Good for them. Babies. Babies. She, I bet she's going to be Hashtag adorable Hashtag love you pregnant. so much, baby. Of course. She's adorable doing everything. She's probably going to have like perfect, like from behind, can't tell she's pregnant, and then she turns around and you're like, oh God, <laughs> that woman is very pregnant. Rebby, I, Rebby Hardy was like that. Yes, absolutely. Totally the same. Rebby Hardy is so pretty. It makes me want to kill myself. I know. Um, God damn it. Anthem is looking to sell Global Force Wrestling I was going to say, speaking of Rebby Hardy and her enemies. <laughs> Even though they just re-signed like a two-year deal with Pop or some shit. Um, also, it's because Anthem is just like hemorrhaging money. Which, Why did you buy this company? You should have fucking known better. Also, there's like 12 years of receipts. Also, my favorite thing about this is right after this was announced... Global Force Wrestling said, effective immediately, Jeff Jarrett is taking an indefinite leave of absence from his position as chief creative officer to focus on personal matters. Jeff will be available on a consultative basis as needed. Like, oh, okay, so he drove this company into the ground for a second time, and now you're getting rid of him. I want Dixie Carter to fucking ride in on a white horse and be like, I fucked this company up too, but guess what? Not as bad as this motherfucker did. Like, I'm all in on Dixie now. White horse. (laughs) Glow style. (laughs) Ridiculous. Any other news? Uh, Yes, I do have some other news. Charlotte has a new book coming out, and she talks about her... Second nature. She talks about her experience with domestic violence with Bram, really openly, for the first time. Cool. Yeah, so... uh, Not cool, but like... No, like, 
good, cool yeah. that she's like opening up about it. She's, this is like the first time she's ever talked about it. And she had, there was a great excerpt that I read. Uh, I didn't write it. I didn't put it in my notes, but she had a great excerpt about like, sort of like uh, Mia Yim talks about where she's like, I felt like I was supposed to be an athlete and that this should never happen to me. And then it did. And then I was being punched in the face. And what am I supposed to do? Like, it sounds really good. So I'm looking forward to reading it. M- like, skip a lot of wrestlers books, TBH. But I like that I'm interested in hearing her yeah. story. And like, especially as someone who's already committed to fuck you, Bram, like, I kind of want to know more about this. Like, I, I'm interested to hear her tell her story so that other people take those allegations seriously. Like, Absolutely. I, that's really good. So that's happening. Big Show is getting surgery on his hip, and that's why he's going to be out. Uh, full disclosure, did not watch that match. I fell asleep. It was so, fine. Yeah. I, it's what you think it was. Yeah, but exactly. there was like a cool moment at the end. Okay. Where yeah. like Bram threw him through the cage and show. Bram. I mean, Bram. Bron. <laughs> Bron. Bram throwing Big Show would be kind of hilarious, actually. Yeah, it would be unbelievable. <laughs> but the whole time while I was watching that match, we can just talk about that right now since you didn't yeah. watch it. It was fine. It was what you expected to me. I like Braun. I like Big Show. But the whole time I was watching it, I was just like, I really appreciate Big Show. And, like, what yeah. he's done for this business and what he continues to do. And, like, him as a personality and him as a person and him as a wrestler. Like... Is he my favorite wrestler? No. Am I going to go back and watch a bunch of Big Show matches? No. Do I really appreciate Big Show as a wrestler? Yes. Yes, I totally agree. And he also seems so, like, loyal and committed to helping other people come up. He doesn't seem like, especially someone who came up specifically in NWO as a very young person. like A lot of hair. Yeah. Crazy. <sighs> fucking crazy, crazy. So it's it's been so interesting to watch him become... It, it, it's, it's like the Jericho thing, where now it's like, oh, you really, really care about this business. And I find it really admirable that he like really wants to make it better. And you can tell that he really does want to make it better, which I like a lot. And does, doesn't mind putting younger talent over and... Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Yes. I have one more thing. About Baron Corbin, secret badass. <laughs> I every week I have secret this is like badass. this is like the third week in a row I've been like turns out Baron Corbin actually metal as fuck like super <laughs> fucking cool. It's you know what there are a lot of people with shitty personalities in wrestling that will turn me off from wrestling from watching their wrestling. Michael Elgin, for example, don't Dolph Ziggler, for yeah, example, exactly. There are big cast Enzo. Those like there are lots of people where it's like, man, this blows, and I'm pissed that you suck so bad. I feel like I'm having the absolute opposite experience with Baron Corbin (laughs) or I was like whatever I can deal with you and now I'm like awesome you're super into gay rights awesome I'm totally right you know what he has cool shirts so if I like him and I can like justify buying his cool wolf shirt like that that works (laughs) absolutely okay so here's what happened with him recently (laughs) that works for me so he lost the money in the bank briefcase there was a lot of speculation that the reason that it happened was because John Cena was the one who was like this kid's not ready false turns out what actually happened was he was at a meeting with Dr. Maroon, who, if you don't know who Dr. Maroon is, he's one of the people who's, like, backed up the NFL about CTE not being as serious as they think that it is. He's also the head doctor for the fucking WWE. So, he he's also the one who hasn't cleared Daniel Bryan, and I think it's because he's legit worried that Daniel Bryan will fucking murder somebody, because he knows that CTE is bad, and, like, cannot publicly back it. Is he the one that fucked with CM Punk and is being, like, sued? Yes, same person. So he published this big fucking allegedly. study. Yeah, allegedly, what the <laughs> fuck ever. Uh, so he published this study. Point one: there is a study that came out that ninety nine percent of deceased football players tested positive for CTE. It fucking is real. It happens. It's terrible. Concussions. Didn't are... they make a movie about it? That was different. That oh. was a, that was the first study that proved that this shit was real. This was a more recent study that was like this is. This happens to everyone. Like, you're fucked, basically, if you pay, if you play football at a professional level. Point two, Dr. Maroon releases this study that's... Or point two, there's... Uh, yeah, Dr. Maroon releases this study that's like, NBD! It's not that big of a deal. Like, there's all these other factors. But doesn't disclose that he's had a 30-year relationship with the NFL. So his paper is fucking trash. Like, you have to disclose this shit. So he's there talking about CTE to the locker room at WWE. Turns out Baron Corbin is one of the ex NFL players suing the NFL about concussions. So he's here in this meeting with Dr. Maroon about this. And he goes, 
Nah, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> Jack Maroon's saying all this shit, and Baron Corbin's like, "You are wrong. Here are the receipts. This is bullshit." And everyone and apparently it was split right down the middle of people who were like, "Bitch, sit down. Don't don't do this. This is the wrong time." And other people who were like, "Yeah, bitch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> this is bullshit." And apparently AJ Styles is one of those people, and that's part of the reason that he's still involved in this United States picture because AJ's like, "You shouldn't punish him for saying this." Like it's he's right first of all and second of all like fact you number got, one he's right second yeah <laughs> so i'm like it's funny because i feel like watching him this week on smackdown he's like acting with his eyes more and i think part of it is that he's motivated in a way he wasn't before and i think it's good that he's fucking standing up for himself and for his other wrestlers like i did not know he was suing the nfl i'm so over on that absolutely sue the nfl also, fuck the nfl <laughs> on top of all of that his wrestling and his, like, shit that he's been doing the past six, month, ha- six months has been way better and, like, Yeah, it legitimate. really has. Like, his hair is tragic. He really either needs to wear a hat all the time or lose a hair I don't know. Hair it's match. starting to, like, work because it's so bad. Oh, it's so it, bad. It, like, really feeds into his heel bullshit. It's so bad. It's so bad. If he keeps his shirt on, I deal with it more. I just, I can't deal with sad tummy still. It's just so difficult to take it seriously. You can't have the hair and sad tummy. Yeah, if you both. Had you one can't of, both. You can't exactly. can have one or the other. We can't have both. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Update on Baron Corbin, secret badass. I, like, I was really excited Baron to hear Corbin, this. <laughs> secret badass. I watched Impact again. I'm not going to talk about the whole thing, but okay. I do think it's very funny that Johnny Mundo's name is Johnny Impact. <laughs> I will never get over it. Is it because he was Johnny Nitro and they were like, is I don't this know. a reference I think, like, to we, Nitro? Maybe. Who knows? So but now he's got a move where like he counts down and then everyone goes, Impact! Which is real dumb. Oh my god. There was a backstage segment where Allie went up to Taryn and was like, um, Taryn, I don't understand why you're so mad at Miss Gail Kim and blah blah blah. And then Taryn just punched her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then that set up so this week, tonight, uh, Sienna and Taryn are teaming up against Allie and Gail. Oh, okay. There was also a weird backstage segment where like What's his name? Brexton Sutter, her, like, boyfriend or whatever, was, like, tending to her wound. And she was like, yeah, I don't know what's happening. Oh, my face hurts. <laughs> and then um, Garza, the the wrestler. <laughs> you've seen him live. He's the wrestler from AAA who um, is a pretty good wrestler, but is also kind of boring. But he rips his pants off really, really dramatically. <laughs> I don't remember who that you've is. You've seen him multiple times. Oh, my God. But he's, that's his thing is, like, the pants rips. Like, he'll okay. wear the pants and, like, halfway through the match, he'll, like, throw up a, fi- a finger and be like, wait, one second. And then, like, has the most... Oh, okay. The most glorious pants reveal. Yes, okay. Yeah, but I he do came to, about. like, check on Allie okay. and just be nice. And he was, like, being nice. And then Brexton Sutter was, like, a real bitch about it. Like, Cody oh, Rhodes, don't it. talk to my wife. A bitch. Get over it. Garza was like, whoa. <laughs> I'm just here. Ridiculous. <laughs> also, so you remember how last week we talked about Laurel Van Ness is going to marry Grado for his, like, yes. green card? So they're planning the wedding, right? And it's Joseph Park and Grado and Laurel Van Ness. And Joseph Park is like, oh, so Laura, where's your family coming from? And she goes, Victoria. And they were like, oh, Victoria, Maine or whatever. And she goes, no, Victoria, Canada. <laughs> And then oh Grado, God. then Grado and Joseph Park's faces were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> so that storyline is terrible, but it is also very. funny. I love that her storylines are really good. Like her, yeah, they're with. They could be bad because it's like dumb marriage stuff, but like I like that it's consistent though, and like, it's like it's making really... fun of it. Yeah, it it doesn't. It feels like funny and insulting, kind of to everyone in equal measure. Like yeah. it's and she's doing a good job. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, Eli Drake and Adonis wrestled Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards, and the thing was like if Eddie or Johnny got the pin, then they could fight Eli. But uh, Eddie was pinned, and so they don't get to fight him. But Lashley wants to fight him. I don't know. Who cares? Again? Oh, who cares Basically, I'm I only care. watching because I really like the ladies and this Grado storyline is funny. What's going on with EC3? Was he on this episode? He had like a funny backstage segment. Okay. That's it. Okay. And he was just kind of like, huh? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> Hello, I exist. <laughs> I'm still here. Did you watch Lucha? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Aaron! I did a lot of shit this week. I was really so fucking busy. It opens with Dario going downstairs to like talk to Mantanza and he is upset and he's like, I was wrong to not let you fight Ray. I needed you because without you by my side, I did get hurt. 
Ray hurt me. Ray 619 me. And then Matanza was like, Rah! So I don't now think I watched this. That's Dario okay, no, is going, yeah, well, Dario is going to, like, feed Ray to Matanza. Okay, all right. You didn't watch this? I really thought that I did. Well, you're a fool. The first match was uh, Son of Madness vi- fighting Masquerita Sagrada. I mean... <laughs> Why? Just because Masquerita Sagrada became an honorary member of, like, the biker gang because he's friends with uh, Son of Havoc and Son of Madness took offense oh, to that because okay. you can't just give colors out. Okay, so I he see. was like taking it to him. The match was actually pretty good because Masquerita is really good at wrestling and good at his like at utilizing his size differential whatever. The commentary was trash fire and not funny and offensive and stupid. It was so bad. From both of them? From both of them. Gross. It was like yeah. next up. It wasn't Definitely just like, didn't watch this. I'm pretty sure we remember that. <laughs> it wasn't just like, oh, a short joke here or there. It was just like, they were like laughing at their own joke. It was awful. It was oh so God. bad. Uh... The next, oh, so um, Masquerita obviously gets taken out and then Son of Havoc comes to like help his friend before he gets hurt. And then Jaro is like, no, 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 you're going to do this the right way. At the end of the show, you're going to have a match, and it's going to be, I don't remember the name of it. It's like a biker street fight. It's, oh, was that what you were watching when yeah, I came yeah. in? So oh, it's like, okay, it's okay. The Lucha, I think it's so funny that Lucha has this history of like, we're going to do all these street fights. I'm just going to put a different word in front of them. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> They're all just regular street fights for the most part. <laughs> Some have different props, but it's just a street fight, but like contextually. Yeah. This I mean, one is a bike. To be fair, fight. that's what the WWE does. It's like a New Orleans street fight, yeah. a Chicago street fight, Sin a Minnesota City street fight. Yeah, exactly. Like they do the same sort of thing. But yeah, I yeah. like it's that. Just funny. But this I like, like that they're like character tailored. Right, and this one's like I feel like a little bit more tongue in cheek. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, the next. I'm match, sure it's a response to that. Right. The yeah. next match was uh, Marty versus Arhenis. Marty, secret, sexy Marty. Not sexy on TV, but sexy in real life. I don't get it. Sexy in real life. Very confusing. So Marty is like moving, uh, losing his mind in this match. Like Melissa's watching. Marty poses on the outside like creepily behind Melissa. (laughs) Melissa's like freaking out. She's like, oh, everyone's creepy. He beats our Hennis up so bad, rips his mask open. He's like bloodied. He takes his mask off and our Hennis has to like cover his head. The like ref like covers his head. Marty's like covered in like Arhenis's blood and like w- like wiping the mask all over him. Gets a mic and basically is like, "Oh, Melissa, you're not gonna like Phoenix without a mask, and I'm challenging Phoenix Phoenix to a, ma- a mask match, you know, at Ultima Lucha." Mm-hmm. And then Phoenix comes out, fights him a little bit, and is like, "My mask for your hair." And then Marty just starts pulling his hair. <laughs> it's really that's, funny. That's weird. I think I did watch that match. That's so bizarre. Not important contextually. I know, but like I, I knew that that was happening. I don't know how though. That's or you could so just bizarre. have read it that it happened. I don't remember. Anyway, that's cool. It was great. So it was it was great acting but, from Marty and and Phoenix. And I Melissa. remember seeing that though. But like, I have a question about that. We saw Marty, and he has hair. Did has anyone seen? Like, I know this was like a year ago, and like he could have grown all of that back. Or from that, there could but, be shenanigans. Who knows? Okay, that's what I was wondering. Like. Hmm, interesting. I doubt Phoenix gets demasked. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, I don't understand how they get around Marty not shaving his head and also Phoenix not demasking. Maybe they shave Marty Post's head. Maybe they cut her pigtails off. Because those are fake. That's true. Those are fake. And Melissa, real Melissa, IRL Melissa has, like, short length hair. I guess they could do that. That would make sense. That would work. Okay, anyway. Joey had a match with Sexy Star because, I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And this whole match, I was just like, ugh, Sexy Star. I know, right? Like, ugh, I don't need to see your shitty face but mask. it is a fun match. I love seeing Joey Ryan wrestle whenever. Um, Taya comes out and steals, like, a uh, sign from the audience. And yeah, starts, yeah. like, mocking Sexy Star. And then Sexy Star gets mad and starts fighting Taya. And then on the distraction, Joey wins. And yeah. it's like, ugh. Mm-hmm. But then Cortez comes out and fucks with Joey Ryan. Yeah, okay. And then Cortez has a backstage segment in Dario's office where Dario's like, I know you're a cop. I know that Joey's a cop, too. I don't like cops. But... I know that you like to fight. Do you want to fight Joey Ryan? He's like, I don't work for you. And he's like, but you want to beat up Joey Ryan, right? Mm-hmm. So now they're going to have like a police street ball brawl. Oh, okay, okay. I did also see that segment too. I must, uh, the site that I watched it on, because I, I have to illegally stream it, breaks it into segments. I must have only watched like the middle segment. Why would segment. they break an hour, a 45 minute show into segments? Because that's how they can host it at um, HD you- quality. 
Why do you need to watch HD quality? Because it is very difficult to watch standard def on a high def television. It looks truly awful. It is distracting to try to watch it at low definition. I know you it's... have unlimited data, but can't you just connect your phone to Wi-Fi and then just watch it from your phone? Yeah, but I usually watch it from my television because I want to watch the whole thing. I don't usually watch wrestling from my phone. I only watch the Mae Young Classic because I had literally no other choice. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the final match was the open road biker street okay. fight. I did not see this. This match was really good, except for I feel like you knew that Son of Havoc was going to win. But it was uh, it was like an assault. A Son of Havoc was like really, really quick. The other guy was good, Son of Madness. Um, but I, I don't know, I guess I just didn't think it was very exciting because I figured that Son of Havoc would win. Okay, that makes sense. But the ending was cool where, like, Son of Magic had, Madness had a hammer and was going to, like, hit Son of Havoc and then he, like, smashed a bottle over his head and then did, like, a, a splash onto him. So that mm. was pretty cool. Okay. But, That's you know, legit. he's a chosen one of the temple. Mm -hmm. It's true. So, let's talk about the May Young classic all before right. we get into all this wwe stuff do you want to talk about the individual matches or do you want to talk about what do you want <sighs> how do you want to do this uh first of all i forgot or didn't even i don't think i ever knew that the second batch was dropping this monday like they didn't really announce i actually it. forgot too and i was like oh it's labor day yeah i just like totally forgot about it and was like oh yeah this makes sense that this the rest would drop today Wish I would have had a little heads up on this. Yeah, they <laughs> maybe handled this really terribly. Maybe would have been a little more prepared for this. So I had to like sneak it in everywhere I could before we recorded. Um, I enjoyed most of it. But uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have learned that uh, pretty displeased with the booking. I think that it's... I'm Here's the thing. Kind of Controversial garbage. statement. I'm not even upset with the actual booking of the tournament. Mm. Because I do think that it does make sense in a lot of ways, character and story-wise, that Shayna would be in the final. This She did some of her best wrestling in this tournament. They love pushing MMA, whatever. It does make sense. It does bother me that it seems like the only reason she did get this far is because of her connection to Ronda Rousey. Exactly, yes. That I agree with. I feel like if they were only pushing her Which, as a separated MMA right. person, like as part of the trifecta, as the actual MMA fighter, as part of the trifecta, who are all in this tournament and like right. they sort of made reference to, I would have been much happier with this. But especially in the end when they had the like three horsewomen, three horsewomen face off, it was like, oh, this is just a vehicle for you to court Ronda Rousey. And it just right. felt... It, it, it feels like, like a disservice. The whole it felt like a total disservice to the tournament. It feels like a disservice to Shayna and like yeah, it feels like a total dis. I know that yeah. she probably wouldn't feel that way, but it does take a lot of the wind out of Shayna's sails. Absolutely, it seems like the only reason she got this was because of Rousey. Absolutely, and that's shitty. It is she, shitty. She did do some pretty solid She's wrestling. She's not a bad wrestler. I think that her ma her first two matches were boring, and I didn't really care about them. And like. I knew that she was going to beat Mia Yim, and I was like, Ugh, I don't... That sucked. Yeah, I it the, did. I thought the match with Mia was pretty it good. It was fine. The match with Candice was great. It like, was four minutes But long. it was surprising. Well, she can't wrestle for a long time, it seems like. It's a it was, problem, though. <laughs> I know, but it was also surprising, like, the way that she got I it thought that and that stuff. Was, like, I think she that, has limitations, but it make, it doesn't make sense for her character to go 20 minutes. I think that the, uh, well, I mean, it sort of does. If she's an MMA fighter and she could go. Yeah, she should be able to tap these girls out quick. Yes. Which is yes. how they're booking her. Yes and no. I mean, I agree with that in some ways. But that's, but this isn't MMA. And I feel I like that's part of it. It's like, I don't want to watch MMA. I already watch MMA. <laughs> like, right. I don't need to see all this MMA in this. It's so stupid. Also, don't they already fucking have an MMA character who they've done, like, absolutely nothing with? Also, she's a lesbian. Maybe we should use her because you want to push LGBTQ people. That'd be great. Anyway, that's like a totally separate thing. But it, I just feel like Shayna is somebody who, I think Candace demonstrate this demonstrates this and Mercedes did that she needs to be carried right now like she can level up and I think that's why she's good with the trifecta because they make her level up and that's part of why I liked her in Shimmer because she's with a group that is elevating her and is like she clearly wants to learn and she clearly is very passionate about this and like I really do want her to do well but 
I feel like she's just totally tarnished by Ronda Rousey now. All she is is Ronda's friend. All she is is the person who's going to bring Ronda in. And if Ronda doesn't have the greatest fucking match of all time, it's all it's going to do is hurt Shayna. And then it's going to hurt this whole tournament. And like, it just yeah. feels totally pointless. It feels like the most fucking WWE thing of all time also. Like, oh, all you wanted was this bitch. This, these, this failed MMA star. That's She's what not- you're doing. I am going to argue that she is not a failed MMA star. She has failed now, and she's no longer with MMA, but she defined that division until, like, I I think it's not fair to say that she's a failed MMA star. I think as somebody who watches MMA, it's totally fair to say that, because Ronda Rousey existed in a vacuum where she was one of the only good people. No, no, no. But... You can be a star and not... I'm just saying... She she's a household name. Everyone knows who she is. She may have failed ultimately at the sport, but you can't say that she's a failed star. Well, part of the reason that I say that she's a failed star is because after she lost, she handled it terribly and alienated MMA media and like Agreed. and failed as an MMA star. Like she did not understand how to handle a loss. But she and has like, star power and she's she still has, a celebrity. She's a celebrity. Absolutely she's a celebrity, but she is not an MMA star anymore and hasn't been and I feel like they're trading on this idea that she's an MMA star and they're underestimating people who actually watch MMA and are like Fuck this bitch. She yeah. she abandoned this sport to go do what? To be the the courted part of a tournament of wrestling of women we don't respect anyway. Like I don't think that they thought about who their actual demographic is and it and it's to the detriment of everybody. And it's yeah. that's what I mean by that. Like I agree with what you're saying. I think she's a household name and that's why WWE wants to court her, but I think that they have radically misstepped on this one. Like, I agree. That I think it's a huge mistake if that's what this ends with. I hope part of the reason that they're doing this week in between is so that they can not fuck up. They can gauge the, who's going to freak out. Like, if Shayna beats Carrie, or Carrie, sorry, like, I think they have an idea of what's going to happen now because so many people have been like, this is a giant mistake. Please don't do this. Yeah. So I, it will be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, I mean, it, it that does suck. And it does leave a tarnish on the tournament. But there were also some really great matches. Like, mm. Bianca Belair versus Kari was awesome. Oh my god, I cried the whole way I through. I love it. Bianca Belair. Good god, she's good. She's my good. god, she's, she's good. EST, man. Ugh, so good. I loved it. And I love that they built it up, too, that she was... She lost because of inexperience and not because she's, like, not one of the best in the world. Right. I really thought that was smart. I, I also really enjoyed Mercedes versus... Abby um, Life. Yes. Yes, Sorry. I agree. This bracket is not filled in, so I have to, like, keep, like, doing it. I forgot that we saw her... Were you at the Windy City Classic? Did you go to that last yeah. year? Yeah. She, they fought at that. I completely yeah. forgot about that. It was like... Oh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. right. This was, like, a good follow-up to I that. I really like the nicole Candice match, even though I knew that Nicole was going to lose. But she got to get a lot of su- suplexes in, and she yes, looked great. she and did I look great. And I just love her. I wish it had been a little longer. That was part of it. Like, I wish... There are a couple of these matches where I was like, man, I just wish you would have gotten two more minutes. Yeah, I, I agree. Didn't need they as- did have to fit a fuck ton in. Yeah, they did have to fit a fuck ton fun- fuck ton in but most of these episodes were 47 to 53 minutes long like just make it a whole hour and cut a little bit of the bracketology out of it i think part of the misstep here also was that they were like let's binge everything we're gonna make this a bingeable series but didn't think about the reality of binging it and like you don't need all of this shit all the time like you can kind of cut down the further and further you get into the tournament and just assume people have watched this like i think that that was a misstep and that they could have afforded more time to them in that case yeah, I agree. Um, and then the Piper Tony Tony match was great. I really love that because you know that they have like this history and this friendship, yeah. and they like wrestle everywhere. And also, like the Piper Kyrie match was great. And at the end, when like uh, Tony or the Tony Kyrie match was great. Yes. At the end, when like Tony was like talking to Kyrie in Japanese and like because they uh, all wrestle at Stardom for forever. Like yeah. fucking Tony and Piper and Stardom right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. like. Oh, it was beautiful. I really loved it. And I'm, like, so over on Tony Storm. I had never seen her wrestle before this tournament. I, like, knew of her and, had, I like, knew that she was Progress's first women's champion, but, like, had never actually seen her wrestle. 
I fucking love her. She's, She's so good. I also uh, really like Dakota Kai. I thought she did. I good. did too. I'm really excited to see more of her. I, I has a contract, right? Yes. Okay. I'm not like super over on her. Uh, I like her. I like the idea of her. Um, but there are other people that stood out more to me. Well, I think that she's a good... Um, She's a great baby face. And oh, like absolutely. They, and they really mean they need baby, baby faces. faces, like, really badly. And so I, I'm excited to see her come up. I feel like she could be a, like, similar to Bailey kind of young kid baby face. And I think that's probably the appeal in her to WWE. And good. Like, that's good to split that into different places. So it's, like, we've seen what happens to Bailey when she's the only person who shoulders that responsibility and then gets moved around and people turn on her very quickly and fucking boo her in Bro- Brooklyn. Like, I think it's a good idea to space that love out between more people. Like, just as a company, that's a good policy. Yeah, absolutely. Overall, I think the tournament was excellent. It does yeah, have this, like, tarnish on it. I did like at the end when it was Shayna and Kyrie like, facing off, and Kyrie was just like, I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, I did that like was that, awesome. too. She just, like, stared at her with her elbow. Like, it was really weird that Stephanie and Triple H came out and gave Kyrie flowers at the end. Like They gave Shayna flowers, too. Did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't see And Shayna see was that. like, I don't give a shit about these flowers. Oh, okay. I guess <laughs> I didn't notice awesome, that. Which actually. Mm, okay. That was great. I must have missed that. No, they both got flowers. Oh, okay. And Kyrie was happy about it, and Shayna was like, I hate flowers. Fuck these flowers. <laughs> um, did you watch NXT at all? I don't think so, no. It's basically a show of Red Dragon beating everybody up. Okay, that's and fine. And then William Regal chasing them down and, like, staring at them, like, how dare you? Oh, okay, I'm into that. Drew, Drew's music hit, and literally, instinctually, I actually, 100%, this is not a joke I made up for a tweet, licked my lips. <laughs> that's terrible. And then I went, what? <laughs> like, Scottish, like, bagpipes. And I was like, oh, I know who's coming out. Like, like, like. <laughs> so gross and ridiculous. What is wrong oh with me? Oh, my God. I mean, you are thirsty for Drew. I don't know what you want me to tell you. <laughs> Literally thirsty Everybody for knows Drew. it. <laughs> uh, Ruby and Peyton had a really good match. Okay, cool, cool. I mean, I just fucking love the iconic duo. And then Ruby, like, is a good foil for them because Ruby yes. is, like, the exact opposite of them, but they're, like, all really good wrestlers. Peyton won because of, like, shenanigans with Billy. Yeah. But it was excellent and it was like multiple segments long it was really good how do you feel about ruby's look they're clearly trying to grow her hair out it's she like, still has half of her head shaved i don't care yeah i, I get it's... what you're saying but she still has black lips and tattoos all over her body and half her head is shaved and that's true how do you know that she doesn't want to grow her hair out well <laughs> that's true we don't i feel like the side shave is kind of an indication of that is that when she was styling her hair and was side shaving it it was very specific for a long time and like yeah it is possible that she's growing it out but I, like i'm not the only person who was like this looks very page stylized specifically like the way that her hair is being done that's not shaved is very similar to the way they used to style Paige. The makeup they're using on her is very similar. Like, I think it's really Paige weird. Paige never wore dark lipstick, and Ruby wears dark lipstick. Paige That's always true. wore nude lipstick. Also, Paige's hair was always curled, and Ruby's hair is Now when she was in NXT, it wasn't. That's the thing, is it's that same kind of, like, transitional look where they're like, how do we make you adaptable to mainstream TV? That's, that's what it reminds me of. I don't know. It still feels very, like, stuff that she personally would like. Like, if you follow yeah. her on Instagram, she posts pictures of makeup that she does, and she likes doing her own makeup, and like right. she is like a badass but she's also pretty like she has like a girly girl side so no, no, it doesn't I know that. feel forced to me okay all right that's fair she also has like what appears to be a bunch of disney tattoos on her thigh and i just I realized know, I that they're this. disney tattoos so like i feel like she has like a softer side that's true so i'm not i get what you're saying and it, you're probably right but i also like yeah i don't want to take away all oh, of ruby's she, agency and like, also she look. like looks beautiful too that's right. like it's not like they've ruined her what have they done it's just like i feel like it's very stark that the one woman who's ever come in with very short hair now suddenly has very long hair abby still has really short hair not really i mean hers is like chin it's it's like a bob, length so but it's curled that's part of it it's like yeah but it's still pretty short and they could comparatively have found, like, that's true extensions and stuff like, that's true it's actually gotten shorter since she's been there no, it hasn't. Yes, it has. It was, like, way longer in the beginning. She used to have the long fucking, like, purple hair and stuff. And now she's got, like, a short blonde bob. When she got signed with NXT, she had blonde hair. But it wasn't that short. I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> I think you're reading a lot into haircuts. Well, yeah. They're, they, you constantly think <laughs> about your hair. I don't even want to hear it. Bangs yeah, but- are, like, a definitive part of your personality. Like, uh, that's, imagine if no one ever had bangs on... 
wrestling and then someone came in with like perfect cut bangs and then all of a sudden had these like gross Renee French bangs. She'd be like, <laughs> why? Why are you doing yeah. this to this woman? Katrina had beautiful bangs and now she doesn't. Exactly. So. Right? See? You were real pressed about that. But so I'm just saying, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like Ruby clearly cares about a lot of that stuff. Well, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like blaming the WWE for her look right now, where also her look is still really... It's still very her, and I yeah. like that she still has the half pants, even though nobody else does that. I do like that she can like, retain that part of her like indie personality. So, yeah. Okay. They set up for a notice qualification match with Ono and Atami, which was last night. I just haven't had a, watch, a chance to watch it. Uh, Lars had a three-on-one handicap match where he like killed a bunch of people. Okay. Bobby Roode and Roddy had their match, and it was very good from both of them. Really? I think that... Really? Bobby Roode is not as bad a wrestler as people think he is, and also Bob... Uh, said Roddy, he was bad, I said he was boring, which is very different. Roddy was really good in this match. <sighs> All right. I just... I'm not sold on him. I also find him very boring, but I will watch it but if he you recommend really it. he's a really good wrestler. That match he had with Drew McIntyre was really fucking good, and this match with Bobby Roode was really good. All right. Okay. I'll watch it. You have to just watch it without the goggles of, I hate this person. I don't hate them. <laughs> I find them boring. It's very different. I hate Dolph Ziggler. I just find Roddy very boring. That's yeah, all. But he's not boring in the ring. Sometimes he is boring in the ring. I don't think so. I, I think, think he's a very it, good wrestler. Part of it is that his personality is bland, and so I carry that over into his wrestling. Yeah, that's and why I'm like, saying oh, you have to take your goggles off and just watch him as a wrestler. Yeah, but that's... Isn't that his job is to differentiate yeah. by not being bland? I mean, I guess, but like, also just like <laughs> appreciate that he's a good wrestler. I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I'll watch it. Cena fought fucking Jason Jordan for like 25 minutes. Oh my god, I barely even remember this. Who cares? It was such a long match, and it like there was no fanfare, there's no setup. It was just like here's Raw, we're doing this match. I know, right? Like, and it was long as fuck. I'm like, I appreciate that Jason Jordan wants to fight everybody and like prove that he's good, but like, but, it was like a weird way. Why to are open you the show? Yeah, like also, why is Jason Jordan just like losing to everybody? <laughs> like, can he get I a fucking a, win? I think that's a heel turn. I think that they are gonna have him lose. And and do really good matches, but keep, keep losing. And then Angle's going to be a dick to him. And then he's just going to freak out. I'm into that. That's fine. Maybe that's wishful thinking, but Roman Reigns came out and then they had like a mini promo back and forth. I don't even care. Whatever. Roman Reigns talked about his dick though. Oh yeah. I busted it. Big dog. <laughs> Big dog. Michael and I left very hard. <laughs> uh- Big dog. That was very funny. I mean, he probably has a big dick. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Not even remotely. He would, that's why he used to wear those special pants or whatever. And the vest protector. He's got to keep it all under wraps. Mm-hmm. Very difficult. Uh, yeah, also, whatever. John Cena's hair looked very dumb. It's so long. It is so It's long enough that it gets fucked up when long. he wears a hat. And he wears a hat every time. Yeah. I think what's happening, I said this to Michael too. He looked fucking down. Here's what I bet is happening. <laughs> He's filming for a movie. I bet during the movie they spray his hair so it looks more even and he looks a little younger but he can't wear that shit when he's wrestling because it'll get on the mat and you'll be able to see it. No, it wasn't even that. It was like he had fucking hat hair. It was like smushed all over to one side. Oh, I was think- talking about the fact that he's balding in the back. Oh, no, yeah, he's definitely balding and yeah. his hair was all crazy. Yeah, but I think that's Why because he's filming. Why doesn't he just keep the jar head haircut? Because he's filming for something. No, but he's been growing his hair out like other times too. It has- he hasn't had like a jar head haircut in a while. Yeah, it's because he's been filming for like You don't three- film for eight years in a row, Aaron. No, no, no. I mean, the longer hair. He's been filming for, like, three movies in a row. That's why he has this long, grown-out hair. But it hasn't looked stupid until right now. Yeah, I know. I'm saying it's been grown out specifically because he just got cast in another movie and he's growing it out right now <laughs> for, like, the last three weeks. That up. No, I know that he's been cast in a bunch of movies. <laughs> but how do you know their hair choices for these movies? That's what happens. You get cast in a movie and they're like, do this to your hair. <laughs> You're just making a lot of hair assumptions that I don't think are valid. I think that these are really logical assumptions, actually. <laughs> so stupid. The Euro Babes fought two-man pool and Dean and Seth were on commentary and this was just like a waste of my time. I don't even care. I didn't even pay attention. And then later in the moment. show, the club fought the Dean and Seth and then the Euro Babes were just standing on the outside and I was yeah. like, what is happening in this tag team division? It is so bizarre. I don't it's so care. boring. It's really and boring. And I like all of those people. I know. I do too. <laughs> Every single person that I named, I like. Yeah. And I was bored as fuck. Yeah, I don't even remember it. I was so bored. <laughs> Oops. 
Jeff fought The Miz for like 800 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> all of these, honestly, there were not that many matches and they were all long. And I so know long. <laughs> we always complain that, oh, these matches were short. Like, but like, I don't need four matches that are, Raw is so long. I don't need four 50 minute matches. <laughs> I know that's not how math works, but I'm just saying it was just like very uneven. I know. It did feel very uneven. The only match that I genuinely enjoyed watching on Raw, I mean, I enjoyed Braun and Big Show in a certain way, but like, I love the women's match. I thought that match was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I love that backstage that. segment. Both of the backstage segments where Naya was talking to Angle and was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, Sasha just gets a rematch," and he's like, "It's contracts. You know how this works. I don't know why you're so mad at me." <laughs> and then Emma was like, "What about me? We weren't talking about you, Naya. We're talking about me." The hashtag. Did you see that tweet that Naya sent and like eviscerated Emma? No. <laughs> Emma tweeted something like. At Naya should be thanking me for getting the win because now we're in the four-way. Hashtag, like, I started the women's revolution or whatever. And then Naya quote tweeted it and said, like, something like, give you a chance. Have you thanked Vince for six months of promos that you did absolutely nothing with? (laughs) Oh, shit. It was, like, the best burn ever. Oh, shit. So that segment and then that excellent segment with Alexa and Sasha. Yes. Yes. I mean, technically, Sasha was a baby face in that. I know. Why, like, she needs to do, if they're going to keep her as a baby face, she needs to do, like, aggressive, badass baby face more. Absolutely. I totally agree. Because when she, like, got all up in Alexa's face, like, Mm -hmm. that was intense and awesome. Absolutely. Sasha is an Eddie Guerrero where, like, heel, wink, actually everybody likes you, and so you're kind of a baby face. Like, she's so good in that role. Like, just let her do Also, that. the boss is not a, a babyface gimmick. The no. boss is literally rolling out in an Escalade and saying, I'm better than you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, your boss. Absolutely. Like, Charlotte cannot be a babyface because she's genetically superior to you. In the same way that the boss cannot be a babyface because... WWE has told you to hate the man forever. Like, she's the epitome of that, except she's a boss-ass bitch. Like, the worst of all things. Yeah. Both the boss and a woman. Like, you should hate everything about this. Like, Yeah, they can never really be true baby faces. So, yeah, like, it's very it's bizarre. Yeah, it's very strange. So I liked this. I thought this was a very good segment for her. I thought that match was really good. I also liked how it ended where... Naya took out Sasha, and it was clear Naya was going to pin her, and then Emma got the tag and was like, I'm going to clean up. Now I won. Everyone look at me. Yes, I like that a lot The characterization of Emma is great. Yes, I agree. Also, it was good optics. Like, you, the champs didn't get pinned. Sasha got pinned, but she was, like, really busting ass in that match. Mm -hmm. Naya is the one that was the reason that uh, she was going to pin, or, like, she, Naya's the one that Sasha was, the reason why Sasha was taken out, but Emma also got in there and got, like, sneaky. Like, it was yes. good character booking for all of them. Yeah, I completely And now agree. we have a Fatal 4-Way for the championship cool. match. Usually I would bitch about Fatal 4-Ways, but storyline-wise, this actually works really well. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I'm glad they're using all four of these women, especially yeah. Naya and Emma, who have been criminally underused for so Except fucking for long. six-month video package. <laughs> That's a little different, but yes, I suppose that's true. I know, it was just like such a funny tweet. Uh-huh. Oh, there was also a Finn and Bray segment. Oh, yeah. I literally had a moment when I was watching Finn and I was like, man, you must be really mad. <laughs> right? He even, like, his promo was even kind of like that here when he was like, I was the universal champion, you guys. <laughs> yeah, right? I was the first ever universal champion and now i'm just here and like don't get me wrong like this is fine i'm glad i'm on tv but like we're all on the same page right yeah (laughs) i also like how bray was like you need the demon you are like weak without the demon he's not wrong (laughs) i know but like that is good for bray's characterization that's true so like Mm -hmm. this feud even though like it may not be where finn wants to be like I think it's good for them yeah, and I their agree. characters. Yeah, and I think both of them have good chemistry as well. And, like, they're in a good, like, their stories intersect in a way that makes sense. And, like, I would rather they tell stories that make sense. Right. Like, it, it's kind of nice <laughs> for the story to make a little sense. It was weird to have, so, I think Sean from Cage Side tweeted, but the 205 Live match was a three-man tag. 
It was almost identically the match. Yes. The same match from the previous week on 205 Live. And Sean tweeted something like, it's like they're actively insulting people who they're are... They're punishing people who watch yeah, 205 pu- Live. Yeah, Absolutely. I saw that same thing. I totally agree. I honestly like didn't pay attention to the match because I was like, I saw this. I literally I saw already saw this. the same match. Yeah. But Neville came in and he was like, oh, you guys are buddy, buddy. Well, next week there's going to be a Fatal 5 way with all your buddies and whoever wins gets to face... Me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was a nice way to set up because, like, Grand Mentalik and Cedric were kind of, like, kind of friends with Enzo, but Enzo was like, I'm a cheater. And they were like, Haha, we're good guys. Yeah. <laughs> Deeply conflicted. I thought 205 Live was fun, though. They opened with, like, the five uh, men in the in the five way doing pretty good promos, like little video packages. The opening match was TJP versus Davari with Rich Swan, Not on commentary, but sitting on the commentary desk. TJ comes out, Davari comes out, and then Rich Swan's music hits. TJ rolls his eyes. Rich Swan comes out, does this little dance, has a big ass thing of popcorn, comes to the commentary desk. Corey and Vic are like, or not Corey, um, it was Nigel because Corey's on yeah, SmackDown yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Nigel and Vic are like, oh, Rich Swan, are you joining us? Oh, oh, you're not joining us on commentary. He takes a fold out chair, sits it on top of the table in the middle of it, and then just proceeds to eat popcorn sitting on the table, which was hilarious TJ won the match obviously and then Swan comes in and is like next week rubber match see you there I'm not mad at you I'm very (laughs) mad at you (laughs) which was good it was good character work from all of them and unfortunately Davari just lost (laughs) it was a good happening but that's the thing with 205 Live though like even the people lose like they're still putting on good matches yeah and the stories they're telling again makes sense Drew Gulak had an in-ring promo where everybody was chanting Captain Underpants at him, and he uh-huh. got very upset, and his hair looked really good. Uh-huh. I don't know what's going on with Drew's hair, but his hair is, like, rocking. Mm-hmm. I did not watch most of 205 Live, but I did watch the Drew segment. Gotta watch the Drew segment. I heard that there was a PowerPoint, I was like, I really have to a tune into this. A concise and fun PowerPoint. And <laughs> as soon as he said PowerPoint, I was like, ooh, Drew Gulak. Uh, Speak of my language. I know, right? Like, uh, uh, that's so literally that's a PowerPoint. That's literally why I watched this segment because I was like, Drew Gulak talking about PowerPoints. I clearly need to tune in. He only got through two of his two hundred and seventy-seven slides. <laughs> no jumping off the top rope. No jumping off the middle rope. Do you think the third slide was no jumping off the, the bottom rope? It had to have been. <laughs> <laughs> also, Drew Gulak having a feud with Tozawa right now actually like kind of makes sense. I and love it's a it. good place for them. Yes, I like, agree. Tozawa's not in the title picture right now. Gulak's not because like he's not part of this five way, and he wouldn't even make sense for the title picture really. And yeah. I think it's a good place for both. And of them. like Tozawa totally fits into his like Silly. you are the problem. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I need to stop your exact behavior. You're <laughs> fundamentally what I'm against. Yeah, and like I just feel like they have good chemistry because they have good solid fun characters that like absolutely i'm gonna see i could see the two of them do this exact same thing in it was a fun match too yeah absolutely like, i i like the idea of like f- high flying stuff and then drew gulak being like i'm on the ground flip 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 also yep. i think drew gulak's music is really stupid and i love it <laughs> I <just laughs> love it's like the begin. it's like the intro of like an 80s cartoon i was just gonna say it sounds like 80s dad is at the bar and it's like <laughs> this is my song <laughs> Oh, Drew Gulak. I love him so much. (laughs) Unnecessary, Nick. (laughs) Just whistling like a creep. So loud. Like a bird. He did sound like a bird. So weird. (gasps) So the main event was the Fatal Five Way. Basically, they all turn on Enzo. (laughs) Enzo's like, oh, I played smart. That's my thing. I'm smart. No. In no world are you smart. No one thinks Um, you're smart, But it's like... it. I mean, it, it's funny for him to dress the way he does and be like, I'm very smart. Yeah, true. So he's on the outside of the ring. Match proceeds. Great match. Cedric Alexander takes out fucking everyone. He eliminates uh, Tony Nese and then Grand T- Mentally and then Brian Kendrick. And, like, immediately after he eliminates Brian Kendrick, uh, Enzo pops in the ring, rolls him up, grabs him by the tights, and Enzo wins the whole match, even though he didn't do dig. Which... Is it terrible because we know that Enzo is a dick and his char- character is dumb and he's not a good wrestler? Yes. And Cedric deserves to be in the title yeah. picture? Yes. Is it storyline-wise bad? Not really. No. Storyline-wise, I think it does make a lot of sense. I think and that honestly, the... if Neville just crushes him exactly. and like puts him, quote, That's in his place. That's the crux of it. 
Like, if, it depends on what happens. Exactly, because if Enzo just wins this fucking belt... I'm never I'm, watching 205 Live again. Ever again? I'll just stop watching. Straight up. I just will stop watching 205 Should Live. Should I tweet that at WWE? If Enzo wins this belt, I'm never watching. You're losing one of your loyal 20 watchers. Right? You know there are very few of us, and we will stop watching. <laughs> Damn it. We will stop watching. <laughs> I had a moment when I was watching SmackDown this week where I was like, Carmella, baby, you really outshun both these other chumps. I know. (laughs) She was in the, like, I know she's like, her and Cass bought a house. Did you see that? Yeah. Whatever. I mean, she probably has terrible politics, too, now that we're being, like, getting down to it. She's gotta. (laughs) We're gonna hate on Enzo and Cass for having terrible politics. uh, She's got to, right? If nothing else, even if she doesn't have terrible politics herself, she is willing to cohabitate with the person with terrible politics, and that isn't of itself a problem. But she's so good. (laughs) I mean, passive third. Passive third allows the non-passive third to be subjected to oppression. Carmella is the white woman. (laughs) (laughs) Ellsworth and Carmella start up SmackDown, and then right when they're about to start, start talking, Kevin Owens' music Perfect. hits, and Carmella's face when Kevin Owens' music hits. I had a moment where I was like, in like if I was watching Lucha or like AEW or something, I would be like, oh shoot, Carmella versus Kevin Owens, but in this world, obviously, they're not fighting. Yeah, definitely and she not. knows that, so her eyes are just like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I love that Kevin comes out, insults Ellsworth, but doesn't insult, I love his like, I don't insult the heels. Yeah. I, like, make friends with the heels. Uh-huh. Insults Ellsworth, because that's what you do. Just fuck Ellsworth, yeah. And he, like, talks to Carmella like she's, like, of his level, because, you know, she's a heel, and, like, heels yeah, yeah. look out for each other. But then I love that he's, like, I'm, like, deadpan, no emotion. I'm your best referee. <laughs> I'm the referee now. Give me the shirt. Give me the shirt. Give me the shirt. I love that. He's, like, backs him into the corner. (laughs) Just give me the shirt. (laughs) Give me the shirt. (laughs) I love the idea of him just ruining every match because he's, like, I'm the ref now. (laughs) I love it. like, so mad. Shane comes out. You know what pisses me off about Shane? So So many things. In this situation, he's doing something, like, bad. You don't have to foot truffle. No, you, you your don't. Your music hits and you walk out with purpose because that's what you would do in this moment. You'd be like, yeah. I'm going to go as the boss. He did do that later. He did walk out straight later. But I really the thought, music. I really thought he they was going to foot shuffle music. out. It was like, wow. bitch, don't do it. <laughs> bitch. Don't do it. I think it's like a Pavlovian response. Like if you place it in music, be. he like doesn't know what else to do. Here comes the money. <laughs> shuffle, 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 shuffle. <laughs> Kevin Owens basically tells him that he wishes he died. <laughs> Everyone would be better off if you had died in this helicopter crash. Like, go. Would it be funny if there Damn. was like a photo of the helicopter and the helicopter was named like SS Womb. I wish you had died in the womb. <laughs> twice, twice in this episode, I was like, oh, but do you wish he died in the womb? Because Carmela had that bit with it's like the... your mother. Like, yeah. you should have never been born. Or yes, whatever. and I was like, do it, say it, <laughs> say you wish you had died in the womb. Honestly, I wish you died in the womb. May be the greatest moment of uh, wrestling history ever. <laughs> so incredible. Having like a biological twin yelling at another one. I wish you died in the womb. <laughs> So well, Jerry Springer watches. <laughs> I think he was a part of that segment, right? I think he may have been. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of Bella twins, Jerry. Uh, yes, that's Springer. true. <laughs> Anyways, Shane beats up Kevin Owens because he's like, "You talk about my family. Don't talk about my children again." That was a good line. I yeah. did. I did really enjoy that. And then Kevin Owens backstage with Daniel Bryan is like, "I'm gonna sue. I'm gonna sue everyone. I'm gonna sue WWE. I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna sue Shane." He put his hands on me. I'm going to sue. I love it. And then later in the episode, like, when Daniel Bryan talked to Shane and was like, you don't think I wanted to kill the Miz? Which was such a good call. Yes, I totally agree. You don't think when Miz insulted me to my face, told me that I would never wrestle, told me that I wasn't good enough, told me that he was better than me, like, made fun of my family. You don't think that I wanted to fight him, but I didn't because I'm the boss. And then Shane was like, yeah, but you have a kid now. And he was like, don't bring my kids into this. Yeah. (laughs) Bitch. You were fired. Not, Not fired. I know. You're indefinitely suspended. Indefinitely I lied suspended. too that he said that he got his call from his dad and everyone was like, you're fired. But not. Indefinitely suspended. But Vince McMahon is going to be on SmackDown in Sin City next week. Why? Because he's got to clean up his little boy's mess. Yeah. And also be there for the fucking May Young tournament or fucking whatever. Or they're... fucking whatever. I can't believe they're doing that after SmackDown next week. It feels so stupid. And then two of five live is after that. 
Once every day, we hate this oh, tournament. We never, we never talked about that they're uh, gonna be showing wrestling live on Christmas Day. But it's fine because the NBA plays on Christmas. Oh my god, that fucking argument makes me so angry. Yeah, I disagree with that as well. They shouldn't do it. Also, the NBA and the NFL have fucking unions and an off season, and they it's don't have to pay for their own different. travel, and they yeah. don't, and they and have like health insurance. insurance. And They're like, like fucking independent contractors. Also, the problem is the goddamn just, superstars. Yeah. It's the crew who found out when they announced it online. They didn't even fucking tell their crew, and so all of these people who make the show happen, these hundreds of other people. Are now Hair, also makeup, lights, yes, ring crew. Are now all fucking forced to work on Christmas and fucking New Year's. Like it is absolute bullshit. Also, the people who are like, "How dare you make this?" and then also go do things on these days. I don't do things on those days because I think it's bullshit. People have to work on those holidays. Like, don't go to places. Stay home. Prepare to be home for a day. It's really not that hard. Like that fucking blows. Like. Christmas, I understand. It's a religious holiday. Definitely there are people who... But it's also like, a holiday that everybody gets off. Yeah, exactly. It's a fucking federal holiday. And it's like, a pagan New holiday. Year, you don't see me... Yeah, and like New Year's Day is a fucking non-secular federal holiday. Let those people have that fucking day off. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Also, why would you announce it on Labor Day? What the fuck were they thinking? Like... How can we as a company be the Steve Bannon of announcements? Like, <laughs> how can we personally make sure this is the most offensive it can possibly be? The like, best thing is for where real? the Hardy wives, what uh, about the, um, what's it, Beth Hardy? She was like, oh, guess I won't be seeing my husband on Christmas yeah. Day. And Rebby was just like, Christmas ruined. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? But apparently there's some rumor that it was the network that wanted it, but like, Tell the network to fuck off. Yeah, tell the network to go suck a bunch of hammers. Like, that's so ridiculous. It's just so stupid. Why did you just say suck a bunch of hammers? Because sucking a dick is a thing that is good, and you shouldn't wish it on people as though it's a bad thing. Tell them to suck rocks or a hammer or something. Okay. Right? <laughs> but, like, sucking a hammer wouldn't be inherently bad. It's not, like, pointy. One side of it is. <laughs> yeah, but it's, like, flat and pointy. You could make it okay. It's still disgusting. His contact with the outside world. I don't know. I feel like there are worse things to suck. Go suck a subway seat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't even suck that. I, there are ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are ways. I can I literally picture it. <laughs> Ew. You're not allowed in here, Puck, because you're mean. Uh, Mello lost to Natty because Ellsworth dropped the... The money in the bank briefcase into the ring, and he the ref tried was to like, cash in, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I think it was supposed to be a distraction, but it looked like it was a cash in. And then the ref was like, "Wait, are you cashing in?" And Carmella was like, "Absolutely fucking not!" And then Natty rolled her up. Yeah, it was mm. like, I like that. I thought it was. I'm really the champ, good. but I win with a roll up. Yeah, I liked that a lot. I thought it was a good match for both of them, and it, like Carmella looked strong and like she was gonna win the whole time, so it was like a nice reversal on that. Right, and, and then Carmella was like, "I wish you had never been born. You are a disgrace." <laughs> I, I like to like. I feel like they're doing it appropriately with Carmella with the Money in the Bank where, like, they're a good wrestler and you feel like they should be winning, but they can only win if they cash in the Money in Carmella the Bank Carmella has right become time. so much better as a wrestler, too. Absolutely. Like, I honestly. also liked it later in the episode. I know that, and maybe you have feelings, but when he was, like, apologizing to her and she was like, okay, we're going to do this my way. And then she kissed him at I first. I hated it. I hated it at first. Where she, I was like, ew, what? And then when she just slapped him across the face, I was like, I'm on board now. I just don't. I guess it depends on what the follow-up is. Cause it, I guess it does like, depend on the follow-up, but it seemed like such like a power move. Like her being like, that, sep- that to me felt like, you're my fucking bitch. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like after having already done the Noam Dar Alicia Fox thing where like, it didn't. But it, I don't know. That didn't feel. That felt like mind games. Are we flirting? Are we having like whatever? Mm-hmm. That that move from Carmella and how she delivered it and who Ellsworth is and in the context of her storyline to me felt like right. I own you. All right. We I do things my, my way. Yeah. I mean, I agree. The follow yeah. up is very important, but it felt like okay. Get down on your knees. Wear this dog collar. I right. fucking own you. Okay. I will accept. That's how that. it read to me. All right. That's not how it read to me. So I will. I will accept. We that. will. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I'm, uh, How great would it be if Ellsworth just started wearing a dog collar? Oh <laughs> my god. Yes. Yes. 
I love it. Mike was saying when we were watching the other night too, he was like, you know, I kind of love that this dude just has this job and has had this yeah, job for so long. Yeah, I don't so resent him to be Not honest. anymore. I like, at first I was like, this is bullshit that he's taking these spots to these people, but he actually is a great valet. And like, uh, he's, he's working hard. He's, he's still yes. at every show. He's still yes. like. Absolutely. Like, and good for him. Like. Two years ago, I bet if you had told fucking James Ellsworth you'll be in the WWE as a permanent weekly character, he'd be like, I will kill you for lying to me. Like, that is such a false rumor. And like, here he is. I think it's just absolutely... I was listening... Have you listened to Throwing Shade from this week? I have not. The they, one that dropped yesterday? Or today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There uh, is a moment where... I don't remember how they got to this, but at one point, Brian Safi's like, The Miz. Do you remember The Miz? Did you watch Real World Road Rules? He wanted to be a professional wrestler. I think he is a professional wrestler now. And I'm just like... <gasps> <laughs> so in the same way I feel about The Miz, because of that, I feel that way about Ellsworth, where it's like, man, you're living your dream. Every like, once I like in a that. while, Throwing Shade will talk about wrestling, but they have no idea what wrestling no is. Clue. Like, they talked about the Mick Foley Santa Claus yes. movie, and they talked Aaron about... Because Gibson's, like, into him as, like, a domestic violence uh, fundraiser. Right. And yeah. then they talked about... Trump being in the WWE Hall of Fame, and every once in a while they talk about wrestling, and I'm like, <laughs> no idea, and I love you guys. I know, I think it's fantastic. It's so good. Um, Dolph Ziggler has a new gimmick that is all the gimmicks, and that is a no gimmick. I hate it. Why do I we waste hate, our time? I hate Dolph Ziggler. I don't want Dolph Ziggler on TV. I don't want him to be repackaged. But this has a potential, because they always say, wrestling is your personality, turned up to 11, whatever. Dolph Ziggler is a whiny little entitled bitch. If his new gimmick is I'm a, I'm a whiny little bitch, look at me, do you like me now? Is this what you want? Is gonna work. Do I like him? Do I want him to be on TV? No. But does this gimmick have potential? Yeah. I don't disagree with that, the way that you put it. I think that the problem is that Dolph Ziggler has, this is not the first time he's done this gimmick. It is not right. new and fresh. And so I feel like Dolph it, Ziggler. Not new, not fresh. Exactly. And so I feel like that's part of the problem with this is that it's like, here's this whiny gimmick not that has new, never worked for him fresh, in the past because new. we know that he doesn't actually give a fuck. And so this personality turn like, when Baron Corbin does, I don't give a fuck, it's a little different because he actually does give a fuck. When Dolph Ziggler says, I don't give a fuck, it's like, oh yeah, you don't actually give a single fuck. And it's, he feels, uh insulting in a malicious way that does not feel fun to me. Like he legit feels like it to me. I, I deserve this and fuck you for not giving it to me. Not my personality's turned up to 11. Like I'm just trying to do this gimmick, but personality turned up to 11. I literally despise all of you. Yeah. I'm like not in a good way. And I just can't get past that. And so like it again, follow up. I will be interested to see how it goes past this. Really. All I wanted from this segment was for Naomi to come out and kick him in the fucking teeth. I was like, can we open the door to intergender wrestling? Because yeah. Naomi fighting Dolph Ziggler would be dope. Absolutely. I will watch her beat the tar out of him 1,000% every day. Uh, Aiden English fought Sami Zayn. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Sami Zayn's uh, mobile cl- clinic also opened. Yes. Which mm-hmm. is awesome. Mm-hmm. I do wish for better things for Sami, but this is a good place for Aiden. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I totally agree. But I do wish Sami could be elevated a little bit. I think that this is a good role for Sammy because they literally have no idea what to do with him. I know, but, like, I wish they could figure out something to do with him because well, he's so wonderful. I feel like he and Ty Dillinger suffer from the same problem where they're both very charismatic, well-liked, well-loved uh, baby faces that they just don't know what the fuck to do with them. Yeah. Like, and it's, I don't think any fault of either of theirs, but I do think it speaks to the fact that they will have longevity if they That's want fair. it. And, like... In the same way as, like, Cody Rhodes and The Miz, where, like, you exist in this middle place for a super long time, and, like, you get to see these people have these great matches, even it's if it's... It's too bad that Sammy and The Miz are not on the same show. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. They've never been on the same show since the split. It's too bad. That's Someday, crazy. you know what? Someday, when Ty Dillinger turns heel, because his gimmick could totally work for heel, it's Yimika, his gimmick totally works both ways. Ty Dillinger and Sammy could have, like, a great feud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. New Day has boxers. Oh do you what? want New Day boxers? Because I do. I kind of do, yeah. I really want them. Uh huh. They all looked really good in those boxers, too. I want a beautiful bunch of beautiful black men on my butt. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Agreed. <laughs> That's like all I've ever wanted. I know, right? 
I'm just going to give them to Michael the day before our wedding and be like, you should wear these. Wear these on our wedding day. Uh, they're going to be in a Sin City street fight with the Usos. Cool. Here's the thing that I wanted from Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan was so excited when the New Day came. Mm-hmm. And then when the Usos came, he had no reaction. But he also loves the Usos. I know. <laughs> I wanted him to be like, my other cool friends! Yes. I'm surrounded by so many cool people. That's true. I miss talking smack. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it yes. a lot. Uh huh. The show was good. good. It was very good. Uh, Baron Corbin fought Ty Dillinger. Speaking yes. of that, uh-huh. and then uh, I thought that was a really good match, actually. And I I liked the segment afterwards where AJ was like, "Look, Ty, I know you've been getting kind of ticked over. Like, mm. Baron's like a little bitch, but like, I respect you. I like what you do, and like, I owe you a United States Championship match or whatever." Cool. Like, I thought yeah. that was. I thought that was. Great. I got very distracted after AJ essentially touched Ty's arm, and I was like, I can't listen to anything else you're saying. <laughs> well, happens, but I am glad. AJ does not like gay people, but I know. he loves rubbing other men's muscles. Yes, he does. And it's maybe why he does not like gay people. Probably he's right. Like, this is too real for me. I have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> too real. And then the main event was Nakamura versus Randy Orton. Nakamura won. <sighs> Nakamura versus Jinder in a Hell in a Cell. Whatever. Let's hope Nakamura wins. Yeah, for God's sake. I've heard a lot of rumors that, not, that uh, I tried to say Nakamura, and then I tried to say Shinsuke, because I just cannot bring myself to say it. I think Shinder is going to win again, and keep it all the way through, like, Royal Rumble. But, like, we've already peaked at Jinder. I agree. Like, it they was... They haven't started their India tour yet. Was it... Ah. Uh, never mind. That's why. That's what Because I was going to say, like, was it important for Jinder to win... Did he win at an exciting time? Was it exciting? Yes. Did I agree with the booking? Yes. Mm-hmm. But, like, you do nothing with it. Mm-hmm. Part of the problem, too, that I didn't even think about, but that Nicole suggested to me, uh, is the politics of going on an India tour in West India, in, in West Asia, with an East Asian man as the person who has taken the title away from a West Asian. Indian man or West Asian man. And I was like, ooh, yeah, that is a uh, messy. That is a messy thing to try to do. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. So. Just give it back to a white guy, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fuck all these people. <laughs> don't need these Asians. That, that'll solve all our problems. Right. Give it to a white dude. Just give it to a white dude. Well, so he can golf while the world burns. Oh my god, that <laughs> photo. <laughs> Ridiculous. I am curious to see Jinder and Shinsuke in a Hell in a Cell. Yes, I agree. I like that they're switching certain pay-per-views. Like, last year, yeah. Hell in a Cell was Raw, and No Mercy was SmackDown. I like that they're doing a little switcheroonie. Yeah, I think it's smart. Like, it, and it, it's good no. to give each of no the people mercy. on each uh, no. roster, no. like, no mercy. a year-long break to not do, do these kind of matches. Do you think they'll do a women's Hell in a Cell? I, f- I fucking hope so. They have enough talented women to do it. No. No mercy. No. No. Final <laughs> thoughts for wrestling? Uh... There's a, general. Lot of, there's a lot of good stuff. There is a lot of good stuff. And the Mae Young Classic was great. Even if I was really disappointed with the ones I realized exactly what they were doing with Shayna, like, I still really enjoyed most of it. And, like, there were really, really good matches. Kirstein is amazing. She's great. She's the purest, purest, she's like the Sami Zayn of women. She's this purest, small little bean. I think she's adorable. I love her. Yeah, she's great. Anything else? No. Man, that was... I feel like we really went we through that. We were fucking efficient as shit today. Yes, we were. It's because I worked out before, so I got, like, a lot of, like, focus. Adrenaline. Huh. Huh. I don't smell very good. Swolverine. 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 That was the baby. <laughs> little baby. That was the, yeah. <laughs> Ew. I just, like, imagine, like, I don't know, like, just a little him, but, like, in a belly. Swolverine. <laughs> All right, well, that's... The end of this episode, but we have a couple reviews. We are still two away from 60. So, like, we're getting there. Get in on it. We need two more because 60 is an even number. Mm -hmm. And even numbers are good. Good for contests. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. This one is Nothing Compares by Illumination. Ah, oh, what a wonderful title. Oh, well, you interrupted the name. I'm sorry. So you're so busy praising I'm... yourself that you interrupted the name no. of the person who gave it to us, It's Aaron. from that song. What? Duh. Uh, nothing compares to you. What? Oh, girl, come sing on. It. I can't sing it. Sing it. No, I really can't. Rex Harrison it. I'm not. 
Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. <sighs> now I gotta find it. All right, well, I'm gonna read this. This okay. is by Illumi... Meow Nati. That's really hard to say. When <laughs> I was clever pun though. When I was first sure. getting into wrestling, I was on the lookout for a lady run wrestling podcast, and as luck would have it, NYD started right around the same time. Found it. Aaron and Stella are insightful, hilarious, and each episode feels All like right, just no. sitting around rambling about wrestling with friends. In my house. No wrestling viewing experience is complete until someone says, I can't wait to hear about this on NYD. Hell yeah. Hear the music! This one. Is this Sinead O'Connor? Yes. I prefer the uh, black keys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this is immediately what it made me think of. That black keys song is one of me and Nick's like sex songs. What? (laughs) Yeah, he has like a soundtrack. No, I don't know what Black Keys are song, song you're talking about. The one you were just playing. This one? No, the one before that. Oh, it was an ad. Oh, well, that's not. <laughs> Side note, Black Keys, Pandora, real great to fuck to. All right, we put okay. Sine down. Right. We're going to read one more review. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, I know this Except reference. We're not going to read one more review because that song destroyed my iTunes. How? I don't know. I'm not on your iTunes. The moment you played that that song, my iTunes was like, fuck that. (gasps) Fuck that. So that's the only review we're going to read this week because my iTunes has completely shit the bed because it was like, Sinead O'Connor, I must turn my phone off. Oh, it's loading now. No, No, it's not. That was my... Did your phone die? Did that happen? Okay. You ruined it. How dare you? Thank you. Not a thing. Alumia Nati. <laughs> yes, your name is very clever, even if it's very hard to say, and it did make me think of that Sinead O'Connor song. You should come see us live in live like... Live and in person. Two weeks, it's something like two that. two weeks. It's fucking close. It is September 23rd, Saturday at the IO Theater in Chicago. If you're here, please come see us. You can you buy can... tickets at Podslam or uh, arcadeaudio.net slash Podslam. We're the 515 show, but it yes. starts at 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. It's $15 for a half day, $20 for a full day. Mm-hmm. Aaron is also going to be in the like Pod Slam yes. brawl. Yeah. I don't know. She's going to be in like a group podcast at the end of the night. Yes, which will be Because super I'm fun. throwing Aaron a bone and letting her be the popular one. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, we really thought we were getting Stella, but I guess we'll settle for this bitch. <laughs> Whatever. Uh. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, you can. Send us questions. We haven't gotten some of those in a minute. Uh, to be fair, we haven't asked because we've been very busy. It's been a content-heavy couple of weeks. Very busy. Uh, you, but you can send us questions or uh, really nice emails about how we positively influenced your life. We like those at notyourdemo at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at un- Stella underscore Cheeks. I'm at Urgency. You can find us on com and at notyourdemographic.tumblr.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should rate and review and subscribe. Leave some reviews. Yes, please. Get entered into a contest on our 100th episode, which is so soon. How soon is that? This is episode 98, I think. Maybe Uh this one might be 99. It might be next week. Oh, fuck. What? It might be next week. I don't know. Oh, shit. Okay, well. Oh, shit. We better get our shoot. I gotta get on that. (laughs) Fuck. Okay. Oh, this is episode 98. Oh, okay, we got two weeks. Woo! Okay, Woo! you got two weeks. Get these reviews in, people. <laughs> but uh, in the contest, if you win, you get a Boone the Bounty Hunter DVD. Ooh, ooh! You get a Not Your Demographic koozie, a Not Your Demographic sticker, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I think it's like a button. That. I'll throw that in there, too. <laughs> no, that's why I meant button, not sticker. We don't have okay. stickers. Sorry. Sorry if you really want a sticker. We don't got them. <laughs> Fucking deal with it, I guess. If you're into that, maybe that'll be a Patreon exclusive content. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Um, also, maybe you just get like a really nice signed, handwritten letter from me and Aaron. Absolutely, we'll like send you a card with a really nice message in it. I'm really good at those; they're my favorite things. Yeah, I will sign it. Aaron will write it. That's exactly what's gonna happen. <laughs> Let's carry on. All right, just like my fucking relationship. <laughs> yeah, shit to do. All right, uh, Demi's. Yeah. Rainbow. Yimica at the end of this podcast. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> Yo, everybody get up! Everybody get up! Everybody needs to understand that I'm more than simply a hype man for this rap group. Just like Geico is more than just a company that can save you money. Geico also has fast and friendly claim service, so they can help you when you need it most. And while I do love being a hype man, I also love reading for children's audiobooks. Like little Bo Peep, she lost the sheep, and she don't know where to find them. Yo! Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.